New tonight, Republicans want Trump to disappear. That is the reporting from The Atlantic's McKay Coppins, who spoke to more than a dozen current and former GOP officials and strategists. But their plan to get rid of him? Well, you'll have to hear this to believe it. And I'm going to talk to McKay about his reporting in just a moment. Because it all comes as Trump ramps up his attacks on his new top target, the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, the man many consider to be Trump's top threat in 2024 if he also enters the race. Kristen Holmes has been traveling with Trump on his campaign stops, and she is out front. Donald Trump hitting the campaign trail and pushing back on criticism of his months-long hiatus since announcing a third presidential bid in November. I'm more angry now and I'm more committed now than I ever was. The former president not only taking aim at his critics, but potential 2024 rivals as well, specifically Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Ron would have not been governor if it wasn't for me. When I hear he might run, you know, I consider that very disloyal, but... It's not about loyalty, but to me it is. It's always about loyalty. One time allies. Is this Trump country or what? You have only one choice. Ron DeSantis for governor. He's going to be a great, great governor. Trump and DeSantis now appear on a possible collision course in a 2024 presidential primary. A rising star in the Republican Party, DeSantis is coming off a 19-point landslide re-election win in November. Obviously, Ron DeSantis is, is looking to run for president, um, which is fine. And, and he'd probably win New Hampshire right now, without a doubt. As DeSantis makes inroads with conservatives, Trump trying to Welcome disrupt to that Florida, momentum, claiming the Florida governor is now trying to rewrite history when it comes to his handling of COVID-19. There are Republican governors that did not talk to the Florida was actually close for a very long period of time. They're trying to rewrite history. But DeSantis isn't the only former Trump ally signaling they might take him on. There may be somebody else in that contest I'd prefer more. It won't matter to the Pompeos who else decides to run. Uh, we'll, we'll make that decision based on whether we think this is our moment. Can I be that leader? Yes, I think I can be that leader. Yet not every potential rival sparking a similar attack from Trump. Nikki Haley called me the other day to talk to me and talk to her for a little while. But I said, look, you know, go by your heart if you want to run. As he embarks on his third run for the White House, Trump is facing mounting legal woes and calls by some Republicans to move on from lies about his 2020 election loss that incited the attack on the U.S. Capitol. On the trail in South Carolina, Trump offering a different message. This campaign will be about the future. This campaign will be about issues. Still, the former president making clear he was ready for a nominating fight, even as he remains the lone GOP candidate in the field for the moment. We don't do prevent defense. We just keep defending, and we're going to win, and we're going to win very big. And Aaron, as you noted, I was with Trump this weekend, traveled with him from New Hampshire to South Carolina, and it was really his official campaign launch. And it was interesting to see him almost participating in a traditional campaign, something we haven't seen since early 2016. He stayed on script. He stayed away from the 2020 election lies for the most part. He even participated in a small campaign stop, as we see politicians do at an ice cream and hamburger shop in South Carolina, talking to voters. And his advisors were absolutely thrilled. He followed their advice. Uh, but many of them that I talked to, they said there's still some concern that they don't know how long this is going to last. They have some concerns. They believe this is how he could actually reintroduce himself to voters. But will he stick with that? We know Donald Trump likes to do what Donald Trump likes to do. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Kristen, thank you very much for your reporting. And now I want to go to McKay Coppins, who wrote that story for The Atlantic that I just told you about, titled Republicans 2024 Magical Thinking. <clears throat> What an appropriate title, McKay, given what you write about. Okay, so what you write about is that virtually everyone in the Republican Party, and you talk to dozens of people, senior officials, strategists, <clears throat> members of GOP, agree that it's time to move on from Donald Trump. But you say they have no plan on toppling him. They are just hoping he goes away. I mean, are they just hoping he gets indicted and that just magically makes him disappear? Well, literally, yes, that was one of the scenarios that I heard repeatedly. It, it was striking how consistently I heard the party needs to move on from Trump. We need to find a way to get rid of Trump. We're way better off with Trump. But then when I would ask, OK, what's the plan for that to happen? It would immediately move into hypotheticals. Maybe he'll get indicted and his legal problems will subsume him. Uh, maybe he'll get bored and drop out. Maybe he'll lose his attention. Some people, uh, you know, clung to this long-held delusion that maybe he would 
become a different person and bow out graciously and make room for the next generation of Republican leaders, contrary to everything we know. What the consistent through line was, though, was that they all wanted him gone, but nobody wanted to confront him directly. There is just this fear that if they if they go after him or if they try to rally around somebody else, uh, they'll spark a backlash from his, his base. And so everybody is kind of waiting on the sidelines, just hoping something will change. Okay, and then there's this 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 hope, this morbid hope. But I mean, this just brings home your reporting, talking about magical thinking. You write this quote in my conversations with Republicans. I heard repeatedly that the least disruptive path to getting rid of Trump, grim as it sounds, might need to be to wait for his expiration. Their rationale was straightforward. The former president is 76 years old, overweight, appears to maintain the diet of a college freshman, and believes, contrary to all known science, that exercise is bad for you. Why risk alienating his supporters when nature will take its course sooner or later? Okay, McKay, obviously this isn't just more, but it also isn't backed by what we know his health is reportedly fine. He could easily do another term as president, which is all he would be allowed to do by law. And that there are some just sitting around hoping for that, literally? Yeah, I mean, you should also note that his parents both lived into their late 80s or early 90s. Um, you know, one former Republican congressman described this strategy to me as actuarial arbitrage um, and literally said that he has spoken to many Republicans who will put on the red hat and campaign for Trump and go up on stage with him and then the next day say, I can't wait for this guy to die. That's a direct quote. Oh. And so I, I was taken aback by how often I heard this. I thought it was kind of a morbid, dark joke at first, but I heard it so often that it started to become clear that this was actually uh, what a lot of Republicans believe, and it just speaks to the de desperation in the party right now. It absolutely does. All right, thank you very much, McKay. I appreciate it. Hope everyone will read your full article in The Atlantic. Thanks. Thank you.